All right, and we're back here on the Crispy Compact Communique. We are done the world of sports. Make sure you head back to part one uh, if you just stumbled across this one first. Uh, so let's jump into the entertainment entree. Uh, there's one big thing that we need to talk about. I teased it uh, in the opener, and that is the fact that the the Star Wars show, The Acolyte, has come to its conclusion. I decided to do a full binge watch of it since that happened. So I can now talk about The Acolyte, and Mikey's been watching it. So here we go. Official Acolyte talk begins now. All right, Mikey, where do you want to start? Um, just by saying that, uh, I, oh, I don't know oh, how about I preference this? How about I preference this before? Oh, so give okay. you some time to think, um, you've said you've always wanted to see a show like this that takes place outside of the main saga. This yes. is, this is really the first time that Disney in while owning star Wars has now char chartered into uncharted waters. Because this is all before the prequel, the prequel trilogy. Yes. So literally, just about anything was fair game. They could have went in any direction with this series. So with that in mind, how did this series fare for you with the Acolyte? Yeah, no, I think that's really good context because I have been asking for that for a long time. Um, and I think that it did scratch that itch for me a little bit. Um I liked the fact that we got to see a world where the Jedi were a like very large and powerful organization kind of operating outside of the government space um, in their universe. Um, also a Jedi organization that hasn't been challenged by anything to that point. You know, they're coming across something that they've never come across, I guess, in a long time in some kind of dark side opposition um what i wanted more of i guess is i guess i wanted even more ancient i wanted to see how things became the way that we know them and i understand why they didn't go too far back because it still needed to be recognizable for fans and for you know just general people tuning into disney plus like oh you know what what is this oh it's it's star wars it's not so far removed that it's so different but i think it's just enough removed that it it did wet my whistle with you know seeing a different side of the universe seeing a more nuanced side to the jedi sith conflict um i will also say what i what i wanted to lead with was that we, I think we mentioned it briefly on the podcast, although I don't remember, but there's a huge disparity between the critic reviews and the audience reviews. And I do have to say that after watching the whole thing, I still wholeheartedly disagree with the audience score. Right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it's, setting at, it's sitting at a 17%. There's no way that this show is a 17%. The critics have it at an eighty at an eighty percent. For, for, for think... Disney's sake, it better not be. I heard they spent something like two, like twenty million an episode or something. Like they really put I some it. money into this budget. I believe it. It was a it was a high budget show. I love this era of high budget streaming genre fiction shows. It's exactly what viewers want and need. Um, so I, I'm on the opposite side of, of the audience average. I think it was a very good um, first season of a series. I think there were some stumbles there that we'll get to um, if we talk about spoilers. But just initial gut reaction, I think it was a super solid first season. I really liked the new direction of seeing a different part of the universe. And I also liked that there was, for a good portion of it, kind of this this mystery element going on of like, kind of who done it or or who's behind it. So I enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna hold my critiques until after you give your initial reactions because I'm really interested to hear what you think, as you know, the resident Star Wars expert who's, you know, given so much time and effort and energy to. To the franchise, no, seriously. I mean, you you read the expanded universe stuff, you've played the games, you've watched the movies, et cetera, et cetera. You you are the lore master. So so what what did you make of of the show and and this first dabbling into a non 
Skywalker timeline. Oh uh, yeah, you're building me up too much because you know it's <laughs> so the accolade. It really, it really came down to there were some bits that I thought really worked, and I thought there were some bits that didn't work. And yeah. it, basically, I feel like the Last Jedi. I feel like this was a, a, a brave effort on Disney's part to go into new territory. Um, I appreciate the challenge. I appreciate um, the fact that they tried to branch out with the Star Wars story. Because, yeah, you can't – I, I do kind of understand – got to put the Skywalkers to rest. I do understand kind of this, the, the sense from some people that – that story is done. Like it, 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 it it's, it's, it's too yeah. much at this point. Um, so I, that I understand. And I agree with, it's just, there's, there's some things about the way that this was done that, uh, just grind, grinds my gears. It's just, it just, it really? wasn't. Yeah. Like there are just some things that they could have done better. And it just, it, it, oh, it just gets, gets at me. And, um, so, so do we want do we want to jump into yeah, to I'm, our misgivings then? Here, so here's one thing, just right off the top of my head, and it's not that much of a spoiler. So if you're if you if you're worried about spoilers, don't worry. Because this is a series where the Jedi are established, and there has to be a problem, then the Jedi have to look that they were unprepared or that they are just dumb or they don't, or they're, you know, basically they made the Jedi in this series look either just dumb or, or just easily gullible or, uh, or complete or dirty cops, because there is yeah. a, there is a, there is a thread in one of the storylines where another Jedi kind of covers up a, 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 a crime that happened. So, it's just I don't know. It was weird. It was like I felt like, are you trying to make me hate the Jedi? Like it make like the Jedi's kind of had this like dumb cop or <laughs> evil cop kind of. You get what I'm saying? Like it was weird. It was yeah. like I don't think that's what I would have pictured the Jedi have been, even if they were complacent. I which I I which I kind of get that whole mantra that. The, the Jedi have been in power for so long that that they don't think that anything's ever going to challenge them. I, I wish that could have been more of the focus instead of like, I don't know, they made, they made them kind of just, it was like, it was like they were evil cops, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, you know what annoyed me? Lazy cops, not evil cops. That, yes. No, no, lazy cops. No, lazy cop is the perfect example. And it's what frustrated me about the main Jedi character, Soul, the guy from Squid Game. Yeah. The number of times where I'm like, how do you not, I don't know, is it just growing up watching the best Jedi of all time in Yoda and Obi-Wan and Anakin and, and Luke? I'm like, how do you not sense literally anything happening around you? Yeah. Like, I mean, there were so many times where I'm like, like, how, like, correct me if I'm wrong, that's kind of what the force is about. Right. Yeah. But Soul was just stumbling through life. Like he's like, oh, my God, totally surprised at literally everything that happens to him. He is kind of bumbling yeah and what would have made that more tolerable is if they took the tact as you've explained it to me before that the jedi hubris was so much that they had become blinded to these things but it didn't read that way it read as just being goofy at times i would have liked it to be like oh my force powers are the best and i never let anything slip by and maybe show that he's really good at it but then show that there are those blind spots. I think they tried to do that by giving him the emotional connection. But if you're so emotionally connected to two individuals, wouldn't you be able to sense that the other one wasn't actually dead? Yeah. You know, spoiler alert. Like, like there's, there's kind of gaps in the logic there. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make sense. The, the other thing that, that annoyed me and <sighs> I, we're going to get in this big spoiler territory here because there's no way to talk about it otherwise. But did the ending bother you as much as it bothered me? Like, I don't mind the heel turn. What I mind is like the role reversal where the whole time the one twin is like, no, don't go study with the Jedi. But then at the end, she's like, 
no, it's totally fine that my mind is wiped and you go study with the Sith now and I just basically F off with the Jedi. Like that that made no – maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I missed yeah. something. But I'm like your whole goal was to prevent your twin from studying with the Jedi to stay together. And then you're like, nah, it's okay, bro. You do you. Like yeah. did that not bug you? I, I hate to say it, but the – was it Osha and – Osha and May. May. That I hate to say, that didn't work. That that was a weak main character. The the what you just said with the the logic at the end didn't make sense at the end. And it's like one of those things where I appreciate the effort. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. She had some. I'll tell you what. She had great fight scenes uh, it, throughout the show. Um, but just as the character, it didn't work. I, I to. Eh. Like that that was kind of a, a weak link in my mind. Um, I liked them when they were on their separate journeys. As soon as they came back together, it took almost all of the drama out of the show. Yeah, and then they did that weird split thing where they they, they changed roles. You yeah. know, the one guy was with the, the maid that was evil. She went with the Jedi, and Osho went with the Sith to just... He was, she was going to try and kill him, but then she wanted to hear him out. Like, that was weird. That kind of didn't work out the way I think they had hoped it was going to work out. To me, it, I'll, I'll, I, there is something positive. I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing this whole show. The, 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 the star of the show, in my opinion, the, that really I was taken aback by, was the, uh, was, uh, <laughs> the Good Place character. Uh, <laughs> John Yu. <laughs> uh I, I, I keep, just watched The Good Place. What's keep, his name? I keep wanting to say uh, Jason, but it's that's not that's, Jason. That's not him. Um, no, it, it, the I don't know Quibi the actor's or name. But... Qu Quibi or something. That's well, I, that's I his character remember. name. Is like Quibi or something. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. This... Near the end, they were just going by the stranger in in the subtitles. Yeah. So the stranger. Everything that they did with the Sith, I was intrigued by. I, I felt like they. They they did everything with that correctly between like b between the fact that they were hitting they're hitting they're waiting for their moment to strike they're trying to lure people into their into their movement um, that that whole scene where he is explaining his position uh, to Osha in episode six everybody loved and I, I'm just just for the record just. I liked it because of the whole, like, you know, trying to, you know, dichotomy of Sith versus Jedi, you know, the, you know, all that stuff. But online, a lot of the girls uh, were loving that part <laughs> because he decided to take a swim, which sure. Yeah, that's, that was, uh, that was a, a choice. <laughs> which, by the way, he beefed up, too. Like, wow, just props to him. Yeah, he's he's not the, the silent monk from the, the good place anymore. Yeah. So uh, they did everything with that. I, I, the, the whole the whole Sith slowly coming back and like trying to claw their way against the Jedi. I like that. I to me that was like their that should have been the thing that should they should have pressed more on. Uh, yeah. But instead, they kind of focused more on the whole uh, Soul and uh, May and Osha and the the witch camp, which the witches aren't you know out of I the didn't realm. Mind them. I didn't mind the witches. They're part of the video games. Yeah. They're part of Ahsoka as well. Like, and I think I think what you're talking about is kind of what I liked about it too was the general world building. Like, I liked the this pre Skywalker world that they were showing us. I just wish that the main figures operating in this world were a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Like, I think that Osha and May. I think that the actresses did did a pretty good job. I think that they could have been really interesting characters if Disney had the balls to just kill one of them. Like yeah. it would have been so much more compelling if at some point one of them had actually died. And then that makes the heel turn make more sense. That, yeah. It makes great idea. It, yeah. Like it just would have, I think coalesced everything instead of it's like they were afraid to take a stance on it at any point. You know? Yeah, they should have killed May at the end of that show, and then Osha. Yeah. It makes sense for her to to turn evil because then it's like, oh, the Jedi right. failed her. 
Yeah. And I did I did like the heel turn. Like that was cool and seeing the the kyber crystal turn. That was cool. Right? Like there were elements I was like I I'm digging this. I just wish that the path there made a bit more sense because like everything kind of worked out the way that I thought it would and the way that I think it needed to. It just they they meandered so much getting there and and the hooks weren't as strong like I I I don't know. Like I I really, the person I disliked the most was Soul. I really disliked Soul. I felt like he was almost useless in that show. Yeah, he was just kind of going through the motions. Yeah. Um, I have something else, too, that I want to bring up. Um, sure. Red Letter Media put this together, and I think it explains why so many of the original fans hate this Dis- post-Disney universe. And I, okay. and I think this, this, this nails it. I feel like Disney doesn't know what the force is. Mm, I think Disney just, they they just kind of use the force whenever it helps their, their, uh, their objectives with the plot. So example, the stupid force healing. That's never been a thing. That has never been a thing up until JJ Abrams decided to throw that in rise of Skywalker. (laughs) That has never been a thing. If you get that was really weird. If you get stabbed with a lightsaber, you're dead. You're not supposed right. to have a miraculous force come. What does the what's the force a surgeon? Does it heal up everything internal? I don't know. When that happened in theaters, I was so confused. Yeah, that's never been a thing. Then in this series, now the you you can wipe minds just just right just all because you think about it. I oh I can wipe your mind away. Yep. I did see that there is yeah. precedent for that loosely in some of the expanded universe, but the expanded universe isn't canon anymore. Hypothetically, it's loose. For, yeah, it's loosey goosey. For 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 the purposes of this argument, it's not a thing. That's ne- that okay. really has never <laughs> been a thing in in the Star Wars lore. So it's just it's it's like kind of just little things like that that have been chipping away. It, it, it's just like they're. It's just like the force is like an ace or a joker. It's ooh ha! I can use it's a wild card. Yeah, I can use this to get out of this situation. And it's like no, there used to be like kind of, for lack of a better word, rules or at least like we knew what the parameters of what the force can do. It's right. I, it's 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 actually the force. I want I want the, the Han Solo gif right now of of Harrison Ford. Saying that's not what the force is, <laughs> like that's it, that's it. I feel like Disney doesn't know like what the limitations are. They they feel like they can just you know, aha! I'm using my force card. It's like no, <laughs> yeah. it's not what it's, it's not what we're supposed the, to do. The the force has always been kind of quote unquote space magic. That's one of the more fantastical elements of Star Wars. But I do think that at least in the original trilogy, there was kind of a clear set of things you could do with it. You could manipulate minds. You could sense when things are happening. You can sense other people and things. You can use it to kind of expand your existing physical abilities, jumping and pushing things and pulling things, whatnot. And of course, the the use of, of the lightsaber. Then of course, Darth Sidious has forced lightning, taking that energy and releasing it in actual, you know, physical way. But in terms of like healing and mind wiping and, and all these other things, you're right. It's, it's, it's very loosey goosey, um, treating it more like straight magic than, you know, a science fiction magic, which should still have some kind of grounding in some kind of rules or parameters. They can be loose rules, but you still need rules for your universe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and again, and again, I, it's convenient for the Jedi to to be like, "Oh, we didn't sense that May is alive out there. Why? I don't know. That's why we need the acolyte. We need that. We need. You know, it it just feels like they 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 either did add did they not or... censor because they're the same person? They they and I don't understand what that even means. They're so like that. They're trying to tie into like, is this a way that? that you get Anakin because remember the whole thing is uh, Anakin didn't have a father. So or it's so, like, or so they say, we don't really know. So it's like, Oh, this could be a way that you could produce life without, you know, two parents. I guess. 
So what is Anakin's mom a night sister? Uh, maybe she didn't know it. I don't know. It's like one of those things where there's a tie into that, but like, yeah, it's kind of weak at best. Uh, See, that's it, why Disney, they should have severed Disney, the ties completely. Disney is adding or subtracting what the force can do based on what they need to do with the plot. And that I think just rubs people the wrong way. I mean, that's, that that's a fair assessment. That's a fair assessment. Yeah. But you know, all that being said, I didn't totally hate the season. There were a lot no. of things that, that I had problems with, but I still give it like a solid somewhere in like the seven range. Like it was, it was a fine first showing. And I think they have the kernels there of something that could become really good. But there were those elements that really bugged me, like Soul being just completely ineffective. The confusion over what they wanted to do with May and Osha and like having no guts to either kill or elevate either one of them. Um, so, yeah, it was just, I guess at the end of the day, it was just a really average season yeah it wasn't like i would egregiously bad but it also was it was like fine you know yeah i would give it a six I, it, okay like there's there's some great parts that i think could be pulled i you know i and this is another thing too some of these episodes are just weird like uh, there are some episodes that are only like 30 minutes and that yeah. but that's including like a five minute pre-roll and then a, a, a eight minute credits. Yeah. Like they were very short. They really, if they really had to, if someone put a gun to the, to the Disney people's head, this could have been a two hour movie. This, sh I, I, this, oh, yeah. this should Absolutely. not have been an eight episode TV series. Yeah. Like, I think, do you think maybe that's part of the problem is that it was a really short, fast series. So is it just a matter of just compression and we just didn't get the time with the characters, the time to fully develop these, these plot beats and these elements, because you're right. It's something that I, I haven't thought about because I've been watching it week to week, but binging it, it must've gone by incredibly fast. It did. And the two flashback episodes just seemed unnecessary, you know? Yeah. It's like when you, when you're, they, you're, they didn't add much to it. Yeah. No. You're retelling. And, and then the second one is basically a retelling of the first one, but just in a different light. So it's like, you're not really, you're, you, you felt like you're wasting my time on that one. So yeah. I, 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 that should have been a more, uh, that should have been a movie. That shouldn't have been a, an eight episode TV series, but for what it is, I would give it like a six out of 10. It was decent. There were some really memorable parts. Some things missed. Um, but Run with Jason. <laughs> I, I like I like I liked his character. That was good. Yeah, it was uh, it was very very average. Um, I still think it was a good first season, in general, but definitely lacking in some areas that I hope they improve on for a season two. I hope it gets a season two. Yeah. They can't end it the way that it did. Well, we'll find out. Uh, it may not. You don't know. Oh boy. Uh, all right. With that in mind, shall we do odd news now? Let's jump into odd news let's of the week. Do it. Yeah, all let's right. get into it. Well, this is appropriate. We're jumping from uh, Star Wars here um, that had an emperor uh, because okay. uh, this, this the title of this story is simply uh, the emperor's helper has no clothes. <laughs> OK, and that caught my eye. <laughs> All right. So, the emperor, the emperor's helper. Yes. Okay. Um, and of course it is a Florida story. So Mikey, would you like to do the honors? Yes, absolutely. It's Florida and they're crazy. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Mikey's trademark song. That, that should just be the anthem of Florida at this rate. Why not? It really, it really should be. Um, okay. So uh, this story, it's not long, but it's, it's just right to the point. Here it is. Uh, police found a man, 44 year old Gregory Gornell. Gornell? Yeah, okay. what a name. Gregory Gornell. Uh, they found him uh, at a stairwell inside an apartment complex, and he was fully naked at 3 a.m. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, somebody's uh, lost on their way home, it seems. Yep. Um, he is not a tenant of the apartment uh, complex. 
Okay. So <laughs> never mind. He's not well, I mean, he's he's more lost than I thought, I guess. Yes. So there you go. Just 3 a.m. There's a random naked guy in your stairwell. And he got and he got in the stairway? Yeah. Aren't most apartment buildings, at least the one that I was in, you have to yeah, you have a key fob that lets you in. Although you always used to sneak in, so I yeah. guess nobody's safe. It, that's one of those <laughs> things. Does anybody actually vet the people coming in? Like you don't. You just open no. the door and you're just like, hey, you know. Have a good you know, night. the easiest way to sneak into an apartment building is to grab some kind of box, any box, doesn't need to be anything in particular, can be empty, and just wait by the entrance. Somebody yeah. will let you in. Yeah. I just I just help so many people commit crimes. I'm sorry. Oh, well. Well, maybe he listens <laughs> to our podcast then. Maybe. Um, so, uh, when police asked him what he was doing, uh, he said that, I am waiting for the emperor. <laughs> Okay, and the emperor apparently lives in an apartment in Florida. Yes, the emperor. The emperor. I just love the fact he just goes by like, yeah, he doesn't give any like uh, info. Like the emperor of like, what? Like, yeah. you know, he's the emperor. Yeah. Of you course, know the emperor. The emperor. Don't <laughs> yes. you know the emperor? He lives right here. You don't know that? <laughs> Is this the emperor of Florida? Is this like a new like political appointment that we don't know about yet the emperor yeah does right is does there, each is there a state get an emperor or is the like the emperor of like the country like how does this work um or is it just the town this was in vero beach so is he the emperor of vero beach the the emperor of the town that's a very small <laughs> empire yeah right <laughs> just, but, just that you know. one town Look, guys got to do what they do to, to feel good. They always got to inflate their ego. So that's true. Yeah. So did the emperor show up? No. Um, oh, damn. This, uh, by the way, this apartment complex was an independent living community for residents over the age of 62. Uh, okay. When, <laughs> when cops asked him why he was waiting for the emperor, uh, Gornell said that the emperor told him he could stay at his apartment. Oh, the what, emperor is kind and benevolent. What, what a what a good-hearted emperor! <laughs> yes, come yeah. to my apartment. Definitely not the emperor from the Star Wars universe. This is a a new benevolent, um, just kind-hearted emperor. Or it is the Emperor Palpatine, and he just sends people to the wrong locations just out of spite. Ooh, <laughs> tricky. <laughs> <laughs> He opens the door to the apartment. It's secretly one of those, uh, the, the, uh, oh, what the heck are they called? That chamber that freezes you into a coffee table. Oh, the carbonite. Yeah. Carbonite that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yep. He just, That's he just you falls do. right into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you will become my new coffee table. <laughs> it's a very elaborate setup by the emperor. I need but... coffee tables. I need co- do, you, do you know how many rooms there are on this Death Star? <laughs> we need coffee tables. We need furnishings. <laughs> <laughs> how do we got to furnish this whole Death Star. That that would be wild if all the furnishing was just randomly frozen people and things in carbonite. <laughs> How many rooms on the Death Star do you think are outfitted with carbonite people coffee tables? I, I mean, how cheap are they on Ikea? <laughs> you know, you got to look that up. <laughs> Some assembly required. Yeah. You got to freeze your own people. Um did the Death Star have rooms in it? Yeah. Like, it's it's huge. Like, where I there were living quarters. What were they like? Were they comfortable? Sure. Why not? The Stormtroopers got, I, to, got to sleep somewhere. I guess that's true, right? Do they get – do they bunk with other people? Are they singles? I'm just more interested now in the yeah. living accommodations on the, on the, uh, the Death Star. Well, it, it, this kind of sounds like the argument for Clerks. Remember, remember the movie Clerks? I've never seen it. Okay. There's an argument in that (laughs) where in the first movie in, in a new hope, um, they blow up the death star, but it was finished. So, you know, everybody's evil. Good. Blow them up. Done. Right. But in return of the Jedi, they were still working on the death star. So So there were like construction workers and contractors. Yeah. Yeah. Did they get blown up? Did we just kill the good, like good people that were just working on a contract job and they didn't know? Most likely. (laughs) Yeah. Most likely. So I feel like that's a similar vein. We need to investigate who was on board both Death Stars when they exploded. That is the series that I want. 
on yes. Disney Plus. Disney, that should be a show. Who was on I the want, Death like, the, Star? The Death Star janitor and like his just his day to day. Yeah, you know, that's yes. what I want. I, the the office, but on the Death Star. Perfect. That's what I want. Book it. Get in get in touch with us, Disney. Yeah. Um, anyway. All right, back to the story. Um, so <laughs> he Gornell also asked, uh, "Do you know how to get in contact with the Emperor?" I think he told me to call him through electric lines. <laughs> so what? What does that mean? Call him through electric lines? Yeah, he's not saying like a the... landline phone. Uh, maybe, but he didn't specifically say phone line. He said electric lines. So like, is is it Palpatine with the Force lightning? Like, wait, I need to, maybe yeah I need to call him up. Well, <sighs> is this like Force Morris code? Yeah, how does you know this... like yeah. what is... through electric lines? Okay. Um. So, so the I'm just so baffled by the emperor in the situation. Like, what did he think? Who did he think this emperor was? Like, I'm. He thought he was going to give him a, a place to to house up for the night. Just the emperor. Yep, and he only went and he only went by the emperor. We don't have any other name on him. Okay. Um. So yeah, and Gornell he. This is the he story. Stood by his he story? stood by his story. He did not change it at all. Um, he is uh, listed as a construction worker in his uh, jail records. Um, but uh, yeah, the police uh, didn't believe him. Um, he was charged with trespassing, um, and he pleaded no contest. So he's going to spend a week in jail, and then they're going to uh, figure out what ne- what's the next step to do with him because. He's still claiming that he needs to see the Emperor. I, I don't know what you do. Boy, how's this for a show? What do you do when a guy says, I need to see the Emperor? Where do you even <laughs> where do you even start with that like request? It's easy. You say, well, the Emperor's down at the station. Come with us and, no, no, and no. We'll, we'll introduce no, no, no. you. No, I'm saying like you take the guys that are fully like 100% blown into that. Like they, 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 they <laughs> this guy believes it lock, stock and barrel. So, like, what do you do then? Like, is there a number? Like, can, is where, there a number? Where did you see this emperor? Do, do we do we have a yeah, number? Yeah, how did you, how, how did you originally get in touch with the emperor? Yeah, you know, like, what can we can we get the emperor's address, his name, his number? Yes, there's I want that be, to there's be. There's got to be something. Yeah, it's like a it's like a bastardized version of like cops, but like, <laughs> I don't know, like where do you, it, I. I what bar did you meet him at? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what did he look like? What did he look like? Yeah, he was what, just—he was just a very shadowy figure. Was he the character from Baldur's Gate or from Star Wars? Like, there's so many, so many different emperors to yeah, choose from. Right. So you got to help us out here. The emperor, you got to love it. Yeah. Only, only in Florida. Yeah. What? What? What a hell of an excuse! What hell of an excuse! I mean, like. I'm sure he probably has something wrong mentally in his head, but probably he's, he's got commitment. Or, he's got commitment. Or just drugs. He's got he's got commitment to the to the excuse at hand. He is not backing down. No, he's he's standing firm on it. Yeah. So there you go. True odd news story there. Watch out for the emperor if you're in Florida, I guess. That's our that's our last <laughs> message. I don't know. <laughs> the emperor. Yeah. You know, um, it makes sense though that the emperor would retire to Florida. It's nice and warm there. He's old, yeah, and frail. Yeah, yeah. Well, they all do. They, 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 all the old people go to Florida. That's that's the yeah. you know, the default. The default. <laughs> yeah. So watch out for the emperor if you're in Florida. All right, and with that, we got to start wrapping this up. Thank you guys for <laughs> tuning in to our mobile on-the-go virtual episode uh, for the podcast, the Crispy Compact Communique. Uh, If you like what you heard, there's two things you need to do. Uh, Go on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel, uh, and go on Spotify, uh, make sure you're subscribed on Spotify so that every week you get an episode of the Crispy Noodle Podcast sent to you, whether it is our full podcast or if it's the Crispy Compact Communique. Uh, Hopefully next week we'll be back in form in person uh, ready to do a full episode of the Chris Bunnell podcast.
Yes, absolutely. So many ways to get in touch with and check out the Crispy Noodle podcast. If you need to get in touch with us individually to share your sports entertainment or odd news stories, you can find us on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm at Mikey Costanzo, M-I-K-E-Y-C-O-S-T-A-N-Z-O. And I am at Rich Liebig, R-I-C-H-L-I-E-B-I-G. On the video feed, uh, it's right above our our video feed. So make sure uh, to get in contact with us uh, if you have a topic you want us to talk about on next week's episode. Any odd news, make sure it goes to me so that Mikey doesn't see it. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I always forget that like we can kind of do kind of do some, I don't know, interacting on the video podcast. So you're that way. On so the, are on you feed. that way or that way? I that way. The, the second one you did. This way? Yeah. There, there you that go. That guy over there. Right. And <laughs> that guy over there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about this guy over here. He calls himself <laughs> the emperor. I don't know what the hell he's up to. <laughs> I have a direct line to the emperor. Don't mess with me. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, that direct line is uh, fading. We got to start uh, wrapping this up. Uh, let us be the crispy noodle in your vegetarian salad of life and boring news. This has been the crispy compact communique. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next week in person. We'll do a full blown version of the podcast, but for now that'll do it. We'll see you guys next week. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. All you fine peoples. Good night. Some of us have great stories, pretty stories that take place at lakes with boats and friends and noodle salad. A lot of people, that's their story. Good times, noodle salad.